Hey guys, welcome back. In this video, I'm going to be showing you how you can connect a React front end created using Vite with Flask. In some of my previous videos, which you may have seen, I've discussed how you can use Create React App with Flask along with Next.js, which if you're interested, you can check out on the top right corner of the screen. However, since it has been a while since uh, Create React App has been deprecated, Vite is the new standard for creating React front end applications. And I'm making this video so that you can connect your React front end with Vite to a Flask backend. So with that being said, let's begin. So I've opened a directory inside of a folder called React Vite Flask. And here we're going to be creating our app and we're gonna start off by creating the front end using Vite and then we'll set up our backend in Python. So first of all, you're going to run npx create Vite and this command will allow you to create an app with Vite. If it asks you to install the package prior to doing anything, please go ahead and do that as the Vite package is necessary. Now I'll hit enter and here it prompts me to enter in the project name, which in this case I will set to client. And then it'll ask me to select a framework in which I will select React, as you can tell by the title of this video. And then it's going to ask you what language you want to use as well as if you want to use the speedy web compiler, which is the SWC option. And to make this video as easy as possible for beginners to follow along, I will just be using plain JavaScript. So after I hit enter, I'll be done with creating the front end folder. And the next step is to, of course, change into this directory. So I'll do CD client and install the necessary dependencies by doing npm install. So if you give it a few seconds, it's going to finish installing all of the dependencies that are listed inside of this um, package.json file right here. And the next step would be to obviously run the front end by doing npm run dev, but I'm not going to do that just yet because I wanna show you guys how to set up the backend. All right, so I've cleared my terminal and closed out of the package.json file, and I haven't made any changes to anything just yet. Um, but now we need to create our backend. So to create our backend, I'm gonna go over here to the sidebar and click this new folder icon to create a new folder called server. And this is the folder in which the backend code will reside. Now I'm going to change into the directory to create a virtual environment so that we can install the necessary dependencies for the backend. So I'll go ahead and do CD server. And the commands to create Virtual environments are different depending on your operating system. So if you're using Windows, I'll post your command on the screen. However, since I'm on Mac, I'm just going to do Python 3 hyphen M V and V and then the name of and then the name of your environment. So I just want to keep it simple. I'll just go ahead and name it V E N V, the same as the package. So I'll hit enter. And if you expand this server folder here, you can see that the virtual environment has been created. So upon creation of the virtual environment, we need to activate it, which we can do by doing source venv v, uh, bin forward slash activate. So it's source venv forward slash bin forward slash activate. Again, if you're on Windows, I'll post your command on the screen. So now that we have the environment created and activated, which can be denoted with the name of the environment showing up right here, we need to install the necessary dependencies for our backend, which for this video will only be installing Flask. So I'm gonna install it by doing pip3 install Flask. If you're on Windows, you're only gonna do pip install Flask. So I'll hit enter and give it a few seconds to finish installing the framework. Once it's done, head over to this sidebar here and click this server. And you're gonna click this new file icon to create a Python file where we're gonna be writing all of our backend code. So I'll just name this file main.py. And now that we have this done, we are officially ready to begin writing the code for our backend. So now I'm going to explain to you what we're gonna be doing in our backend. And I've cleared my terminal so that it's easier for you guys to see. So in apps where you have a separate backend and a separate frontend, those servers communicate through HTTP requests. Now, to demonstrate that connection, in this video, I'll be creating a backend route where a list of users are returned from that route, and the front end will be used to retrieve those users' names from the backend route and display them on the front end. So I want you to first think about that, and you'll understand this as we go along. So I'm gonna start uh, writing the code, and I'll explain to you what basically every line does. So we're gonna first do from flask, import flask, 
and we're also going to import JSONify. Now JSONify will be used to send the response of our API route in a JSON format. Okay. Then we're going to do app is equal to flask underscore underscore name underscore underscore and this will be used to create an app instance. Then we're going to create a route by doing at app.route and the route for our API route is going to be API users. Okay, so forward slash API forward slash users and we're only going to permit get requests on here, which is what this method is for. All right, now we need to write the actual function that has the code that runs whenever we um, go to this route. So I'm going to start off by doing define users since we're going to be returning a list of users and we're going to use JSONify to return these users in JSON format. So we're going to do return JSONify and here I'm going to create an object and we're going to have users as the key and the value is just going to be three users which I'll just name my name, Zach, and Jesse. Okay. So now we have our route configured. Now we need a way to run this application. So to run this application, we need to create a conditional statement that goes if underscore underscore name is equal to underscore underscore main underscore underscore, we're going to run this app. So we're going to do app.run and I'm going to set debug is equal to true since we are in development mode and want to see live updates. And I'm going to set the port to 8080. So now that we have our code configured, let's start our server to test what the backend route is now returning. So in my terminal, ensuring that I have my virtual environment activated and that I'm inside of my server directory, I'm going to run python3 main.py. If you're on Windows, you're just going to do python main.py. And once you hit enter, you can see that the server has started and it tells you that it's a development server because we have this debug is equal to true enabled and it is running at this address. So I'm going to go into my browser and I'm going to go to localhost at port 8080 because that's what we configured the port to be forward slash API forward slash users because that is where our backend um, API is located. So if I hit enter, you can see that we have a list of users that belong to this user object returned at this forward slash API forward slash users route. And now that we know that this works, we can begin setting up our front end and configure it so that it can fetch from this um, API route. So I'm going to go back to my code and I'm going to just stop this backend server for now and clear my terminal so that it is easy for you to see. And we can begin configuring our front end. All right, now before we proceed to working with the front end inside of this app.jsx file, which is inside of our source directory and our client folder, we need to ensure that we allow cross origin requests to occur. Now, since the front end is calling the local host at port 8080 to get data from this route right here, we need to ensure that this server is accepting those requests. And to do that, we need to enable origins in our Flask app. So to do that, what you need to do is first install Flask cores, which you can do by doing pip3 install Flask cores. If you're on Windows, you're just going to do pip install Flask cores. And once you have it installed, you're going to do from Flask cores, import cores. Okay. And then you're going to go and below your app instance, you're going to create a variable called cores and set this equal to cores and then pass in the app instance and then set the origins to accept all origins. And we're only doing this for the sake of this video. Okay, so if you wanna specify your origins, you can do that here, but to eliminate any errors that may occur, I'm just gonna set it um, to accept all origins. And now we have most, basically all of our uh, server configuration completed. So now when we head into the front end inside of this app.jsx file, what I'm going to do is first, I'm gonna open up a new terminal and head over to my client directory and I'm going to install Axios. So Axios is what we're going to be using to fetch API requests to our server. All right. So once you have installed Axios, you're just going to do npm run dev 
And I'll also start up my server again. So I'll do python3 main.py. If you're on Windows, you're just going to do python main.py. So once you've done this, you can head over to your web browser, and I'm just going to go to localhost at 5173. And you can see that we have the React NV boilerplate. If I you know click this, it has this counter. Um, and what we're going to do is fetch the backend API. So I'm going to open up my developer tools over here and I'm going to head over to uh, this network pane and I'm just going to refresh it. So I'm going to write some code down to fetch this backend API and I'll explain to you what we're going to be doing. So we're going to first off need to use effect and I'll explain to you why we're going to need this as we go along. So first off I'm going to write a function um, that will fetch the backend API. So I'm going to call this fetch API. So I'm going to do const fetch API is equal to an async function because API calls are of course asynchronous. And I'm going to set this to have a response variable that will store the data in our back that the data that is retrieved from the backend. And we're going to wait to get the response. So we're going to do await axios.get and we're going to pass in the backend URL, which if we head over here, just copy and paste it here. All right, we're basically accessing localhost 8080 at API users to retrieve the users. And then we're just going to console.log response.data.users because what this does is basically access the response and any data that is um, given in this response, we're going to use to access the user's array, which is what we've set it to right here, all right? And then we're just gonna need to call this function. I'm gonna call it inside of this use effect so that this only runs on the initial render of this component in React. So I'll do fetch API, and I'm passing in an empty array at the end of this use effect so that this only runs once on the initial render. So once I save it, and if I head over to my front end and refresh the page, whoops. All right, refresh the page and head over to the console. It is saying that Axios is not defined. So silly mistake, I forgot to import Axios. So I'll just do import Axios from Axios. And then here, once I refresh it, you can see that the users are being logged. And the reason that this is being displayed twice is because of this parameter called strict mode, which is for debugging so it runs these uh, use effect blocks twice, all right? And if we head over to the network pane, you can see that a request was made to users and we retrieved the users. And this response.data.users is simply grabbing this user's object and printing out the users that are in this object, which is this array, all right? And in our console, you can see this output. So our next goal is to display these users onto the web page because that's what the whole purpose of this video is. It's to demonstrate that we can call an API and display the data from that API on the web page. Now we have it displayed in the console, so we're done with the API fetching part and we know that this works. To display it on the web page, what I'm going to do is create a use state array. So I'll just do array, set array, and this will just be a use state array that's empty by default. All right, and our goal is to populate this array with the users that we retrieved from the backend. So to populate this array, we already have the users with this response.data.users. So what we're going to do is simply do set array and set it to this response.data.users and populate it with that. And this, of course, is only going to happen once. So our users are going to be located inside of this array variable. Now we need to read this variable and display it on the front end. So to display it on the front end, we can just display it where this edit source app.jsx text is right here, which is over here. And we can simply do um, array.map, and we're gonna map a user, and each user is gonna have an index to a um, span tag that contains their name, so user. And the span tag will just give it a key of index. And if we hit save, you can see that we get the users here. Now the issue with this is that each user is being displayed next to them without any kind of space. So to give it some spacing, I'll just do br. Whoops. Uh, 
create an empty tag, and there we go. And here you can see that we have the first user, second user, and third user displayed. All right, so we have the three users displayed. Now we're getting this error in our console saying that each child in the list should have a unique key prop, and that is mainly due to us having an empty tag here, and then a span tag and a br tag right after it. So to fix this issue, um, we can just create a div tag altogether, and I'll take away this uh, p tag as well that is surrounding it. And this div tag, we're just going to have it contain the key, and we'll remove this key from this index, and we're using this br so that we have uh, a new line every time that the user is printed. So if we go back, you can see that this error now goes away. Now the cool thing about having these three users displayed is that this updates on every uh, render of this component, right? So every first render, it's going to update. So if I refresh it, you can see what happens in the network pane is that a request to users is made and those changes or the response is reflected on the page. Now. What we can do is change the users in the backend, and we'll see that change also be reflected on the refresh of this page as well. So if I go into my backend file, and let's say I change the name or the spelling of Zach from Z A C H to Z A C K, and save it, and refresh this, you can see that that change is also reflected. So what what's really going on is that this front end, all it's doing is going to the backend and saying, hey. Let me get the data that you have right now, the most up-to-date version of this data. And it's simply displaying it. Any changes that we make in the backend. So if I remove Zach from this user's list and refresh the front end, the front end, the code isn't changing in the front end. The only code that's changed is in the back end, but it's doing the same operation. And all it's doing is grabbing the users and displaying them. All right, so that is it for this video. Now I apologize if this was a bit of a quick explanation, but I hope this video was helpful in assisting you with connecting your React front end with Vite and Python back end with Flask. To recap what we did, we first created the front end using create Vite, then we set up our server in the virtual environment, and then we set up the back end file by creating the API route. And then we fetched that API route using the Axios library in the front end, and all we did was just have some data in the back end that could be updated at any time and accessed it from the front end, and whatever data that we received, we put that into a state variable, which is then used to display the users on the screen. And for every update that we could make in the back end, the front end reflects those changes on the initial render. So that's it for this video. I hope this was helpful in helping you understanding how um, HTTP requests work with two separate servers, as well as connecting your Vite uh, front end with your Flask back end. So if it was helpful, make sure to leave a like and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one.